Hello, and welcome back to Curiosity Mine and to something a little bit different this time. So, I've kind of started an accidental series of videos on this channel about the opal mining town of Lightning Ridge in northern New South Wales, Australia, making unexpected appearances in different kinds of media. We've already looked at The Shadow of Lightning Ridge, which was a silent film from 1920. It was set at Lightning Ridge, but it was actually filmed just south of Sydney. So the producers of that movie never actually went to Lightning Ridge. And another one that we looked at was The Opal Hunters, which was a comic book from 1949, published out of a Sydney comic book house, and it's got a really familiar Lightning Ridge story. There's videos on both of those on the channel. But what I've got now is something that's a little bit more modern, like 2020 modern and this product was also developed a long way away from Lightning Ridge it was developed in France so you've probably already seen the clickbait title on this video and look it's mostly true this is a video game that features Lightning Ridge although to be fair this is a video game that features everywhere on earth so Lightning Ridge isn't really special in researching this video I did a bunch of digging to see if Lightning Ridge or Australian Opal, or Opal Mining has ever really appeared in a more conventional video game. Like, if I could find an Opal Mining simulator, or some kind of action game set in the Australian Outback, of which there have been a few, but none of them have gone near Lightning Ridge. Or maybe even a puzzle game that specifically featured Opal, at least as more than just a colourful rock. Just out of interest on that subject, Assassin's Creed Valhalla includes Opal as an in-game currency, and it's a collectible item in Sonic and the Black Knight, that really popular Sonic the Hedgehog sequel. But obviously neither of those games have any connection to Lightning Ridge or to Australian Opal, so after a ton of research and nothing but dead ends, I'm still pretty confident when I say that this game is the only game ever to feature Lightning Ridge, and the game is Microsoft Flight Simulator. And you're probably thinking, wow, that's, that's, that's a cop-out, and you're mostly right, but this does get more interesting. So Microsoft Flight Simulator has a really clever but also kind of dumb way of rendering out most of the world. It uses Bing Maps, which is Microsoft's own map server, and it uses artificial intelligence to scan the satellite images, detect where buildings should go, and then it plonks down pre-built buildings that match the size of those building footprints from a library of buildings that it deems appropriate to the area which is where it all falls apart for Lightning Ridge, because the catalogue of buildings that the artificial intelligence has chosen appears to be light industrial warehouses and rural barns and houses that belong in the American Midwest. So this is going to be Lightning Ridge as you've never seen it before. Now, I don't have Microsoft Flight Simulator, which is a bit of an issue, mostly because I've got a Mac. So instead, I asked Chris, a friend from the other side of the planet, to record an aerial tour of Lightning Ridge for us. So special thanks to Chris for making this video possible. Also, if you're interested in aerial tours of Lightning Ridge, I have a previous video with a real joy flight over the town and the opal fields from 1975. That might be right up your alley. But for now, Let's get into Microsoft Flight Simulator. And so far, that's a pretty good representation of Lightning Ridge. So, Chris has us in a nice little ultralight here for minimum speed and maximum visibility, so we should be able to see what's going on. So far, this is a pretty good representation of Lightning Ridge Airport on what looks like a quiet Sunday morning. Looks like there's a fire truck ready to go at the terminal. A couple of planes parked on the apron. The hangar buildings look accurate enough. And now we're flying over Aerodrome Road and we're starting to see what we'll see a lot of, which is barns and large industrial buildings. Most of the buildings underneath us right now are actually miners' camps. So Microsoft and Bing Maps have upgraded a lot of these buildings to be quite a bit more substantial than they are in reality. We're just approaching the bend in Aerodrome Road here, Lawn Road on the right heading out of town, the old entrance to town. And on the corner up there should be a two-storey camp, John Hudson's famous two-storey camp. But Flight Simulator only gives us a single-storey house with a chimney. So again, we've got a lot of barns and Midwest bungalows hanging around in the bushes here. 
Uh, remember, all of this is just designed to look good from a distance, so we're really analysing this from much closer and with much more scrutiny than it was ever really designed for. We're just about to cross over Stoney's Road and into Lightning Ridge proper. It doesn't look terrible. Some of the houses are a bit ridiculous when you're familiar with the actual buildings, but it still looks like Lightning Ridge. And there are a lot of two-story houses and houses with dormer windows in the roofs, which is very much a Midwestern American architectural style. Uh, there's Rainbow Street down there. Hang on, did that car just bounce? Yeah, yeah it did, it did bounce. So we're heading towards Khan's supermarket, the big building on the left, and the old Warford house is just in front of it. It's actually, it's not a bad representation of the house there. Uh, some of the shops here are a bit ambitiously modern. That L-shaped building is supposed to be the service station or what was the old co-op going back a few years, so that one's certainly in a bit of an exaggeration. Just as we head towards the centre of town here, I'm going to slow things down a bit just to point out these white blobs on the road. Those are actually angle parked cars on the satellite picture, but obviously the artificial intelligence has no idea what they're supposed to be, so they just kind of appear like burial plots for cars in the street. This is, this is where we bury our cars. And now we're coming into the centre of town where the Diggers Rest Hotel used to be and we've got the courthouse, the little yellow building, that's, that's actually not bad at all. On the right we've got the school but we'll loop back around to that. I'm just flying over the soccer fields now, some more random barns and sheds and a few palm trees. And we're going to do a quick lap over the water reclamation ponds out the back of town. It really looks quite good out towards the horizon there where the Wyoming opal fields are. It's quite a good representation. Just coming back in over the school now, which is now made up entirely of industrial factories and office complexes. That's not entirely accurate. Um, now just some general residential streets. Would you look at the number of dormers on the roof of that house? Uh, just flying over Marilla Street with a red car there, and then Harlequin Street, and onto one of my favourite failures of the Microsoft Artificial Intelligence, which is this gigantic shed with the blue roof which is supposed to be an Olympic swimming pool out in the open. And now we're heading across Pandora Street and into Black Prince Drive. Again, the houses just aren't quite right. But if you squint, it looks pretty good. Chris deliberately flew us out this way because we were hoping to see Amigo's castle, but unfortunately the artificial intelligence didn't recognize it. So all we get is the vague outline of the building on the ground, which is pretty unfortunate. Uh, we're just heading over Sims Hill and Indian Lookout and there's a brick house down there with a chimney which certainly doesn't seem right. And now we're going to fly back down Pandora Street. This was part of the flight plan for the 1975 aerial tour. Uh, there's a couple of empty spaces down there that should have buildings in them. And just as we head back towards the big blue pool shed, you can see that it's rendered out the diving complex, the gymnasium, the library and the arts and crafts centre as large industrial buildings, but it still looks decent enough from a distance. There's the Lightning Ridge Holiday Park or the old council caravan park with not a single caravan in it. And heading towards the main street, Marilla Street, we can see that the Opal Cave has been generated as a three-storey residential block with several chimneys on top. Lots of solar panels on the roofs, which is potentially accurate because obviously solar power is a pretty big deal in Lightning Ridge. Uh, there's the school again with its military and industrial buildings. Uh, here we're looking at the netball courts just behind the bowling club and the pharmacy, which looks pretty good. The service station at the end of town is rendered out as a barn, which is pretty normal for this version of Lightning Ridge because apparently it's just barns all the way down in Lightning Ridge. Uh, the Lightning Ridge Outback Resort looks kind of like a hodgepodge of random buildings. We've got Jack Murray Corner just down there. And then the industrial estate, which actually looks pretty good. That large building used to be Pip's Place back in the 90s, but I'm pretty sure it's a lot straighter on the block in real life. Mining and Steel is the little house on the left there, and the rest of the industrial estate looks okay. The roofs are a little too pitched for Lightning Ridge. We don't have as many angular roofs. Our roofs are a lot flatter. Oh look, there's a semi-trailer coming down Haley's Comet Street there. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
and again this residential area around Fantasia Street looks okay. It's not right, but it's okay. It looks like the building and texture pack that's been selected would have been more at home in maybe rural Colorado than rural New South Wales, so I can't be too harsh on the program for working with what it's got. It looks okay from a distance. If you were flying over Lightning Ridge at 10,000 feet rather than 700 feet, then I'm sure it would look fantastic. Just for interest, here's Lightning Ridge as seen from 5,000 feet in Microsoft Flight Simulator, which is kind of the altitude the game is really designed to emulate. And it looks pretty decent from up here, but let's get back down to almost ground level where things are a bit more interesting. And now we're flying over the other end of Black Prince Drive and Cardinal Road, and we're going to head back around and make our way back to the Lightning Ridge International Airport. The amount of traffic seems about right for Lightning Ridge for a quiet Sunday morning. And just as we fly over the patch of trees here, they've really done a good job on the greenery because it, it really does look like gum trees and bimble box and mulga scrub, so that's pretty cool. There are the occasional palm trees here and there, particularly in town, and don't get me wrong, there are occasional palm trees in Lightning Ridge in real life, but there's just not quite as many as Flight Simulator is occasionally spawning. So that's the three mile road beneath us now, and we're just coming up on the end of the runway. Just beyond the end of the runway on that bend in the road is the Big Opal. I've made a video there in the past, and we're reducing speed for landing, or given what this aircraft looks like, maybe Chris is just not pedaling so hard. Fasten your seat belts, ensure your tray tables are in the fully upright and locked position. Lawnmower engine disengaged. and touchdown. Welcome back to Lightning Ridge. And there's another one of those palm trees on the right just there. Thank you very much, Chris, for the virtual joy flight over Lightning Ridge. So that is Lightning Ridge, as represented by the artificial intelligence algorithm at Microsoft and Bing Maps. It's surprisingly decent, except when it isn't. One more thing before we wrap this one up. Microsoft Flight Simulator is designed to be a flight simulator, so a reasonably accurate physical simulation of what it's like to fly various aircraft at various real-world locations using real-world physics and supposedly a lot of really accurate measurements. So, out of curiosity, Chris wanted to try an experiment. Historically, the largest plane that I'm aware of having landed and departed from Lightning Ridge Aerodrome is a Lockheed C-130 Hercules, which delivered supplies to the town during the flood event in 2011 that isolated the town for a few weeks, and special thanks to the people on the Lost Lightning Ridge Facebook group for confirming that for me. The C-130 Hercules needs about a kilometre of runway to land, and about 1.4 kilometres of runway to take off in optimal conditions. The Lightning Ridge Aerodrome runway is 1.406 kilometers long, so the Hercules was, was cutting it pretty fine. Microsoft Flight Simulator doesn't let you fly a Hercules. It's a civilian flight simulator. However, it does let you fly a Boeing 747, so that's exactly what Chris did. Just as we watch this, the Hercules needed 1.4 kilometers to take off. The Lightning Ridge runway is 1.406 kilometers. And a Boeing 747 in the best conditions requires a conservative 2.1 kilometers of runway to take off. So this is pretty treacherous. So apparently, yes, you can fly a Boeing 747 out of Lightning Ridge, at least in a simulation, and only if you're comfortable having a pretty rough takeoff and trimming the tops off most of the trees to the west of the runway. It's certainly not an ideal scenario, but there you go. If you want to fly a plane over a virtual version of Lightning Ridge with all of the wrong buildings in it, then you'll need to grab yourself a copy of Microsoft Flight Simulator and head to Lightning Ridge in it. The airport code is either Lima Hotel Golf or Yankee Lima Romeo Delta. This video was made with the help of Chris, who kindly recorded the flight over Lightning Ridge in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Literally could not have made this video without you, Chris. 
If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to Curiosity Mine on YouTube and following along on all of the usual social media channels. The links are in the description. And thank you for watching.